Well, I mean, first of all, as is usually uh, the case for me when I watch film, um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. I mean, some of it was as simple as uh, missing shots. I mean, you know, we we got a couple of really good looks at uh, at threes that we didn't knock down. But with that said, um, I thought there were three possessions there at key times um, where we really forced the issue instead of moving the ball freely and hitting the open man um, where guys were taking it upon themselves to try to force their way to the basket and score in, instead of moving the ball. And so, um, you know, we looked at film of all that today and, you know, one of the problems we've had a little bit, I think, is in games, we, we will have these stretches where we're really playing well. And then when we miss a couple of shots, we get away from playing the way that was allowing us to play well. And that happened last night. Like we had a good stretch where we were really playing well and the ball was moving freely. And that's easy when the ball's going in. But when you miss a few, you still have to understand we're creating quality shots. We're going to live with those. And when we missed a few, then we started forcing the issue. And um, I thought in the last four minutes, had last five minutes maybe had three bad possessions. Um, now, preceding that, we went into a little bit of a drought where we were getting pretty good shots and not, and not knocking them down. You know, Zoe had a wide open three. Josh had an open three. Kyra had an open pull-up, you know, where we were getting good shots. It doesn't go down. B.I. missed the pull-up. Okay, those are quality shots for us. And, you know, we've got to live with them. And we've got to learn to live with them to the point that we stay with it and keep creating good shots with the confidence that enough of them will go down rather than saying, geez, we've missed a few. I'm going to force my way in between three or four guys, try to draw a foul or whatever it is. Um, and so I, I thought we lost our commitment to the way we wanted to play. Yeah, and conversely, after uh, watching the film, how did you feel about uh, the defense, especially in the third quarter? It seemed like you guys were starting to make some progress before uh, De'Aaron Fox, you know, kind of went off in the fourth quarter. Just how did you feel about the defense after watching the film? Well, I, I thought our um, I thought our defense, particularly in our rotations in pick and roll, was was really, really good. I mean, you know, we forced 20 turnovers. A lot of them were on our rotations off the of pick and rolls. They're hitting their big guys on uh, short rolls. We're rotating to them. They were turning the ball over. I thought our effort um, in that area was uh, really, really good. Um, I thought our, um, our help at times was not as good as it needed to be, just in individual situations, in transition or otherwise, just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, we were, we were account late at times and obviously, you know, De'Aaron Fox is tough, man. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, he's quick as heck and you've got to be there early. And I thought we broke down there a little bit, but, um, but overall against the top 10 offensive team coming in, our, our defense was much better last night. And look, I mean, Harrison Barnes, I mean, he had three tough threes on us, like, Short of fouling the guy, there wasn't a whole lot else we could do. Our defense was good. Um, you know, it, it can't all be, in terms of evaluating it, it can't all be about the result. I, I thought our defensive effort and, and execution last night were, were good. And we did lose, you know, we did lose uh, Fox a little bit at the end. But um, overall, a, a good defensive performance, I thought. Hey, Coach, it's uh, Andrew from ESPN. Just looking back, uh, not just at last night, but in, in fourth quarters in general this year, uh, Brandon's numbers are, are down, shooting percentages. Um, I think his assists are down in, in the clutch minutes. Uh, do, you, do you think he's forcing it too much in, in the fourth, trying to be the guy and, and taking more? I know he, he's good at making tough shots. He does that for three quarters. Do you, do you think he's pressing a little in the fourth quarter? Uh, a little bit. Yes. I, I think that, um, 
I think that he um, he wants to be the guy in that situation, and um, I think he gets in those situations and you know feels a responsibility to our team. Really, really wants to win badly and takes it upon himself to try to do that. And so, you know, we watched film today, he and Zion and I, and, um, you know, we can see Zion did the same thing at the end. So there were back-to-back possessions there where, you know, Brandon tried to get through traffic, turned the ball over, and then Zion took a really, really difficult shot, you know, going across the lane, back-to-back possession where there were simple plays to be made that those guys have been making consistently over the last three or four games. But I think at that time of the game, they're feeling this great responsibility to get the job done and to win it for us. Um, Instead of just continuing to make the right play and whatever, whatever comes up is what you live with. And, and so, you know, we've got to try to change that mindset a little bit. Um, they've both done a great job creating shots for us, and they just need to continue it for 48 minutes and be willing to live with the result of that. Hey, Coach, Christian Clark here again. Uh, we saw Kyra um, in early rotation minutes last night. Um, are, are you at the point yet where, you know, you feel confident saying, you know, he's going to be a, a rotation piece for the foreseeable future? Is, are we still at the point where it's kind of a game-by-game, matchup-dependent thing? Well, we're probably somewhere in between those two things, Christian, to be honest. I mean, I think um, I think we all want him to play. Now, does that mean every single night? Does it mean 20 minutes a game? Does it mean 12 minutes a game? Um, I, I'm not, I'm not, I can't give you a definitive on that yet, but I do think, you know, I want him to play. Coaching staff wants him to play teammates want him to play. I mean, yeah, we want him in there. I mean, he, and and I liked, uh, I liked his decisions last night. I liked his pace. I liked his defense. Um, You know, as happens with guys, he he had trouble getting the ball in the basket last night, but, but I, uh, I liked his decisions. I liked what he was doing. I've said to you guys before that there's really nothing to not like about him. Um, as a player so we just need him to get older and bigger um and we probably can't do much of that by tomorrow so um you know but we like him yeah and you mentioned earlier uh you know the process of trying to convince guys hey we're going through the right process even if we are missing these shots that you know we need to continue doing what we're doing to get those shots just what's that what's that you know battle been like with such a young team to convince them hey here are the areas where we're going in the right direction even if it feels like we're losing games right now, we're here are the things we're doing correct to keep going in that direction. I guess what's that like with such a young group when it feels yeah. like losing games? That's a great, it, it, listen, the, the hardest thing um, about, about losing is, is to try to maintain belief in what you're doing and in the way you want to play because you're not getting the, tangible rewards of that so you play a milwaukee game and you attack inside and you throw it out and you make 21 threes well everybody goes yeah that's the way we need to play and then when the ball's not going down you deviate from that a little bit you know and and it's hard it's hard in everything it's not just it's not just the offense you know i mean it's everything you're doing it's it's tough when you're not getting the results you want to keep everybody on the same page heading forward and believing in what you're doing. It's not an easy, it's not an easy thing, but we show them the good times in games every day, uh, as well as the things we could be corrected. And I, I think our guys are hanging in there are hanging in there pretty well and battling and fighting through it. And, and uh, you know, we've just got to believe that if we keep doing that, that things will come, you know, and I, I've seen it. I've seen it throughout my career change with teams. So both on my own teams and with other people, you know, I mean, was it five years ago, maybe where, you know, Miami started the year 11 and 30. And then in the second half went 30 and 11. Now I'm not saying you're going to have that kind of turnaround all the time, but 
if you keep plugging away and believing things, it is amazing how that at some point, at some time, things just click and start to take off. And so we're fighting through a really tough time right now. Um, you know, it, it has been difficult and we haven't played as well as we would like. And we're in this, you know, like everybody is playing all these games. We're in the middle of six and nine days and the whole thing. And just to hang in there and to keep coming at it is a challenge. Um, but I think our guys will will continue to do that. Hey, Coach, just one, one more. Uh, you, you mentioned watching film with just uh, or, or with B.I. and Zion. How often do you, do you talk with, with just those two about, uh, the, the pressures of being the two go-to guys or, uh, or, or just being the, the, the two leaders on the court for this team? Well, since we got back off of that uh, road trip, um, we've met after every game, the three of us, and watched film. Um, you know, and so not specifically talking about the pressures, but yeah, about how defenses are going to play them and load up to them and their responsibility. And, and I do it with the two of them um, together because I think when you're building around two guys, their relationship has to start to, you know, evolve and develop where they can hold each other accountable. Um, I think their relationship in how, you know, they communicate with each other and how they play with each other is very important for our organization going forward. And so that's why we do it um, together. And it's both about the offense and the defense, you know. I mean, they've got to, and, and they're trying. They really are trying. They've got to take on more defensive responsibility too. You know, we, we point out to them, you know, whether it's LeBron James and Anthony Davis or, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, or even young guys like, you know, Jason Tatum and, you know, Jalen Brown, that the, the best teams, their, their best players are two-way guys, are two-way guys. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people in this league who can put up numbers, but the winning teams, those guys are two-way guys. And so, these guys need to improve, as does our whole team, but they need to improve defensively, take on that responsibility. And then defenses are going to load up to them and they have to use their remarkable abilities to get the best shot for our team, not necessarily for themselves, but the best shots for the team. And, and I think if you're, you know, if you're really watching and going back watching film, um, it broke down a little bit late last night, but for the most part, both of those guys have been making a really concerted effort to attack, but to make the right play. And sometimes that's the shot and sometimes it's the pass. Um, but that's the stuff we look at their defense and we look at those decisions on a daily basis. Um, they're both fully committed um, to winning, winning both all about the team and they're both really trying to get better. So you know, we just all have to stay at it and try to help each other uh, get through this time. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Coach. Appreciate it. Okay.